What's going on everyone? This is Jay from Premier Gaming Entertainment. I know it's been a real long time since I last posted a video and I do apologize about that. Sometimes with life, uh, you know, things happen and uh, I guess it's you just get a new perspective on life and things catch up with you and uh, I just haven't been able to post. But I'm working to try to get that change and post more often. Uh, what I wanted to talk about today is kind of two parts. Um, one is, basically I'm going to be talking about the whole thing with uh, Michigan basketball. I know mostly on this channel I'd be talking about Michigan football, but I wanted to talk about Michigan basketball. First of all, uh, when I thought about first making this video, this was before there was an actual coaching hire. And John Bielan had actually uh, taken on the job as the Cavs, you know, official head coach for next season. And I first wanted to discuss that and talk about that. Um, first of all, I'm real grateful for, and I know a lot of Michigan fans were real grateful for the job that he did at the University of Michigan. Uh, the way he came in and turned around the program and, you know, left the program, you know, in a trending upwards situation. Uh, you know, in the last six, seven years, he's taken the team to a national championship game. Unfortunately, not able to win it. But all the same, if you see where the program was, you know, before he took it over to what it is now, I mean, you know, he, I think he did an amazing job. Um, I'm just kind of completely surprised and shocked that he took the job as the Cleveland head coach. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I think that Cleveland's going to get a good coach. Uh, he, like I said, he did an excellent job. I'm not sure how his coaching style is going to transition to uh, the National Basketball Association. You know, be, you know because... To me, being a, a college coach and being an NBA coach are two different things. One is more, and I guess more so that I'm con I'm kind of shocked at is, to me, Beeline seemed like more of the, the father figure, teacher type of coach, as opposed to what a lot of these NBA coaches are, which is basically a manager, you know, a manager of personalities. <laughs> And trying to get the best out of the players. So I was kind of shocked that he took on this job. Mainly, one, because of his coaching style. Two, because of his age. And three, because of his health. Um, you know, for people who don't know, uh, last year he ended up having, you know, surgery. If I'm not mistaken, heart surgery. And, you know, I... I the rigors of an NBA season can be very, very, very taxing. Not to say that being a, a college coach for basketball is not taxing as well, especially for the recruiting and all that stuff. But to me, there's a lot more pressure on you as an NBA coach, especially a team that's not a top-tier team. Now, if you're a team that's a perennial playoff team, a perennial powerhouse team, then taking over for whatever coach, the only issue is obviously going to be whether or not the players are going to respect you and whether or not you can live up to what the previous coach was doing. But other than that, you're pretty much going to be set for having a winning season, you know, other than obviously injuries and whatever the case may be. But taking up that dumpster fire, which is Cleveland, I don't know, given his age and his health concerns, whether or not that was the best job for him. So I don't know if this was just, he really, really felt that this was something that he could do, or if it was just kind of like almost like one of those bucket list things where he was never an NBA coach and just wanted to have the experience of coaching in the NBA. All in all, I wish him all the best of luck, and I hope that everything works out for him and 
you know, the season is not too great for him and it doesn't cause him extra stress just from the rigors of travel, the rigors of dealing with players' personalities, and the rigors of obviously losing. So I, I hope that everything works out for him and he's successful in his new position. Um, that being said, um, he gave his reasons for leaving. I don't know how believable they are. I mean, he did say that it was because of recruiting and the one and done and not being able to properly um, keep a team together in order to make a run. I mean, for the most part, the teams that he was able to get to the championship team, uh, champ championship game with, I'm sorry, were, you know, not a bunch of freshmen. Well, the first time he got there, it was a mixture of, it was all underclassmen, but, um, I mean, he said that he got tired of the whole thing of not being able to, you know, the one and done deal uh, that is in place. He was never able to really um, have a solid chance of building a team to win a championship because, you know, they're, the players are ready to leave. And, I mean, I can understand that, um, you know, Brozdenkis became a one and done this year, and I guess maybe that was the, the final straw for him. I don't know, but it is hard to win a championship if you know the the players that you get are not the top tier guys, and with the guys you actually still get, you you still can't hold on to them. So I, I can understand his frustration from that standpoint, but um. Transitioning into now, I'm 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 excited for the new coaching hire, which if you don't know is Jawan Howard, former Fab Five uh, member. Actually, from what I just found out, the first signee of the Fab Five, and you know he, he had been an assistant coach with the Miami Heat, so it's not like he doesn't have any coaching experience. Uh, fact about it, at one point in time, before the hiring of Frank Vogel, he was actually someone that the Lakers were looking to hire. So, from that standpoint, I'm I'm excited for the uh, for for Michigan basketball from just for the standpoint of one he's an NBA coach, not head coach, but still an NBA coach. So he has the experience and the pedigree and the credentials of dealing with NBA players on a one-to-one -one basis. So he has that experience, he has those relationships, and he knows what it takes to, you know, deal with people at that type of top-tier level. Not only that, obviously he played the game, played the game at a high level, being an NBA All-Star, um, lottery pick, all that good stuff. So... I think this is really going to help Michigan football, not football, why am I even saying football, Michigan basketball as far as being able to get, you know, top tier recruits. The one thing that, except for that one year with John Beelon where that recruiting class where he was able to get, um, who has he got, where he got Mitch McGarry, Glenn Robinson the third, Karis LeVert, Nick Stoskis, um, you know, I know I'm missing someone else out of there. Um, it'll dawn on me later. I know there's one more person I'm missing out of that. But um, being able to uh, pull in all those recruits was basically their best recruiting, recruiting class that he's ever had. And... But he's never been able to pull in like the top top notch recruits consistently. He he's been able to pull in a few five stars, but he he's never been able to you know compete with you know the Dukes, the the Kentuckys, the Kansas, um, you know the North Carolinas, 
uh, he's never been able to pull in consistently the top fame recruits like those schools are able to do every single year. So I think that with the hiring of Juwan Howard, uh, I think that Michigan is going to be able to pull in through his relationships and through his coaching experiences NBA-wise, I think he's going to be able to pull in higher rec- higher and better recruits to the program. So uh, I'm excited for that, and I'm also excited from the standpoint of the, uh, the university finally acknowledging and fully embracing uh, the Fab Five again. I mean, I know the history going back is... You know, one of those things where I'm sure if the school overall would want to forget about it and push it to the side. And I know a lot of the players still feel some kind of way about basically being cast out as outcasts. And um, it, it's good to see that the school finally has come full circle and brought in you know, a player such as him to coach their team. I mean, I'll be honest with you, the only reason and the the number one reason why I have this on and this on and I'm a Michigan fan is because of the Fab Five. That's what got me even into watching college basketball was the Fab Five. Um, Really didn't have any per se interest in it but up until that point and then I started watching the Fab Five you know I was young at that point in time and those guys to me completely reshaped how college basketball not that it was played but its whole perception because up until that point it was just preppy guys um, that wore short shorts and I'm not going to say it was boring, but there was no, I hate the word, but there was no swag to college basketball. It was just nerdy, geeky, preppy basketball with short shorts and tight uniforms and all that stuff. And the Fab Five came in and immediately stamped their impact onto the college game. Wearing the black socks, the baggy shorts, you know, playing a certain type of way. First time that, you know, a major basketball team, I don't know if, can't speak for every single basketball team out there, but that I know of anyways, that was starting five freshmen, made it to the national championship game two years in a row. Um, They just completely changed how people watched and perceived college basketball. And now all the all the teams now not necessarily wearing the black shots, the black socks and the black shoes and all that stuff, but the whole gear, the way that the college teams are dressing with the baggy shorts now, all of that came from the Fab 5. So I'm glad that the, the university has hired Juwan Howard, and I wish them all the best. I hope that this is what pushes us over the edge and finally gets us to the point where we can actually get over the hump and win a national championship. So, anyways, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching it. Like I said, I do apologize for not making videos for a while. Life sometimes catches up with you, and um, in my case... I've just been really busy working, and um, a lot of times, uh, there's been many of times where I've came home, wanted to make a video, and just, I was just too tired, I just didn't feel like doing it, Um, or just other reasons, but like I said, I'm going to try and be more consistent with making these videos. So anyways, if you liked the video, definitely feel free to leave a like on the video, Um, you know, For everyone that's been on my channel watching from day one, thank you for the support. Thank you for sticking with me. 
Um, I really appreciate everyone who subscribed to my channel. Uh, I'm still trying my best. I want to grow this channel as big as I can. Um, I know without you guys, I wouldn't be where I'm at now, but I'm trying to get this cha channel as big as I can. So if you, if you can, please share this video with as many people as possible. Um, I, I want to get this channel bigger than it is. I know part of that's my fault for not posting as much as I possibly could, but I'm trying to change that. So anyways, thank you for watching the video, and as always, go blue.